Come on in where it's warm. Kick the snow off your shoes. This is Don Trosper, Public History Manager for the Olympia Tumwater Foundation with another session of Talking Over Old Times. Whenever we get together to talk about the past, a common phrase overheard is, remember when we had that big storm? Maybe it was the October Columbus Day windstorm of 1962, or one of our infrequent ice storms, or more commonly, the rains that overflow the roads and rivers. Perhaps it was an unusual snowstorm that took out power for a number of days. Everybody wants to talk about the weather. Well, the same was true for our local ancestors. Weather was a big part of their lives, since many were farmers or worked outside in the woods or on the sound. Looking back to the 150 or so years in Tumwater Olympia area history, I've seen that weather often comes in cycles. There are bad, cold winters for a couple years, and there are mild, warmer winters for a time. Hot, dry summers are balanced out over time with cool, wet summers. Overall, we here in the South Sound in western Washington are noted for milder climate patterns. And that's why harsher weather sticks in our memories, I suppose. Let's go to the early 1850s here in Tumwater. Things were going pretty well for the new town of Tumwater. It was growing, industry was building along the falls of the Deschutes, and people were optimistic. But then, the winter of 1852 hit. In late October, it snowed 15 inches, and the temperature stayed very cold. It brought on a time of near famine on the Puget Sound. In fact, George Bush, to the south of town, was just about the only man in the entire Puget Sound area that had any surplus stores of wheat. Upon learning of that fact, speculators from Seattle arrived and offered him a small fortune for the surplus in order to corner the market and make a killing. They did not reckon on the character of Mr. Bush. He refused to make a profit from others' misfortunes and did not sell to the speculators. Instead, he kept it and apportioned it out to his needy neighbors and friends and even a few outsiders and immigrants who were in dire straits. That's a story that should be repeated to every generation as an example of the moral character upon which our communities are based. But back to the weather. William and Margaret Rutledge arrived here in October of 1852 after hearing that there was hardly ever any snow in the country. And as soon as they arrived with their family, the 1852 snowstorm hit. They had no feed for their oxen and were forced to drive them into the woods to feed on Sal Al. They settled on a half-section claim next to Jesse Ferguson. Their original house still stands south of the middle school on Little Rock Road. A stone monument marks the site. 